Hey there everybody and welcome back to the second Blender tutorial in a row that I'm recording today. A uh, reason being there was a couple days where I didn't have access to a microphone such as this. So I was just gathering ideas and I'm like once I have the sweet phallic microphone in front of me I'll be able to make a bunch of tutorials in a row um, and this is the second one of those. As you already saw from a render that I hopefully demonstrated uh, we're going to be making procedural rope but uh, more than that we're going to have complete control over this as you would expect because it's geometry nodes. So uh, for example I could draw something like this and it automatically turns into a rope and a pretty realistic one so let me draw a couple more just so you can see how kind of you know usable this is um so i've made a bunch of ropes by the way you can edit this and it's gonna you know it's gonna work uh here's what they look like they, they look pretty rope-like. I mean, you could do a bit better by just diving into the material and doing a bit more work than I did. It does look a bit like a churro, but eh, it looks pretty good. Especially once you get close, you can see it kind of breaks. But you see it has little rope hairs. It has all the twistiness going on. And uh, yeah, this is completely math-based and it's not that hard to make. And once you're done, uh, you can draw ropes on top of objects and all that. So let's talk about how to do it since it's pretty easy. So. Uh, of course, I'm using Blender 3.1 Alpha, although everything I do is going to be compatible with Blender 3.0. So don't worry uh, if you're up to date, but not using the alphas and all that. It's fine. So rope is the goal for today. How do we do it? So it's again, completely geometry nodes. I'm going to go into geo nodes, select the cube, make a geo nodes group. Actually, so you could do it like this and then import in a curve and then convert that curve into a rope. Although maybe what's better is instead of the cube, so forget everything I've said so far, we're gonna start off with a curve, whether it be a Bezier line or circle, turn this into the GeoNodes group, and I'm just gonna call this rope. So the name of the game is turning this curve or any curve that I input into rope. And that's why I changed it from a cube. So uh, for this curve, I'm just gonna bring up the resolution just so it's a bit smoother, and now we are good to go. So this uh, group input, this geometry is giving us the curve. First order of business is giving it thickness. So it's not just a curve, but it, you can actually see it. It's a mesh. And I guess what a rope really is, is it's a couple strands that are twisted together. So let's talk about how to do that. So uh, starting off with giving this thickness, we want to take the curve and convert it into, say it with me, a atheist, no, a mesh, curve to mesh. This is what's going to give it thickness. So we, we take the curve, we convert it in, into a mesh, and we have to say, hey, GeoNodes, use this profile curve as the thing that gives it thickness. So what I mean by this is we can use a curve primitive, like a curve circle, or you could use a curve uh, star, whatever. Connect this, and now you can see this thing looks awful, but it has thickness. So I'm just gonna bring down the radius. So you can see at this point, uh, whatever we do to edit this, it's gonna work and it's gonna give us this noodle. So really the idea is we don't want a circle kind of passing through this. We want two circles that are twisted or even three that are twisted together. Uh, so let's do that. Instead of one, curve, we want uh, two. So let me visualize this. So here we have our curve circle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this by using a transform node. So we have the curve circle and we have a transformed version. I'm going to join these together. And nope, we're not. I mean, in some sense, we are joining strings. But in this case, a string means something else. Uh, we're going to join these together. And for one of them, I'm go going to offset it. So you can see uh, this makes a copy of our circle. Um, but it moves it a bit to the side. So now we have two circles that are going to be copied. Uh, so I'm going to move this over by, well, I guess we could give this full radius to begin with, the radius of one, and then we could just shift it over by like one unit. And then we take this and bring it back with another transform by negative one unit. So mm, negative 0.5 units, did that a bit incorrect. So it's a Venn diagram. Uh, so what I've done here is I've taken a circle, made a copy of it that's shifted over, and then took both of them and shifted it so the Venn diagram's in the center. Uh, if we take this now and use this as the profile curve, again, it's gonna be a bit dummy thick. But you can see now there are two curves uh, sweeping through here. So now to set the radius instead of like doing it here, eh, I mean, you could do it here, but then there's a bit of separation. Uh, maybe the strategy is to set it independently. So set curve radius here so that everything kind of stays centered. Nice. Okay, so you can see uh, now we have a kind of the same situation. I'm just kind of building on this idea, but now we have two noodles. So this is more like a, a wire or cable for a telephone pole. So now the question is, uh, how do we take these and twist them, tangle them betwixt each other um, as we pass through this uh, curve? Well, um, actually the answer is in that sentence. As we go along the curve, we wanna twist or tilt the curve 
um, so that they twist together. In other words, we want to take the tilt and uh, change it. Uh, you're going to notice in this uh, curve stuff, if we view it, uh, we actually have we have radius stuff, but we also have tilt information. So that is what we're going to be changing. So uh, let's do instead of set radius, we are going to set the curve tilt. And I want to have it tilt more and more and more. So you can see when we increase the tilt, it's actually going to rotate this exactly like that. Uh, we want that to increase as we go along it. And in other words, we're going to take the index. In other words, the points that compose this thing. So we take the index, we tilt it. So you can see this one's flat and then this one's here. Um, only issue with this is you can see we actually only have two points here. So last thing to do here, I know in the weeds, very confusing, resample the curve so it has more points. In fact, I'm going to do this by length. Um, so it's not going to pick a set amount, but it's actually going to update it based off the length. And I'm just going to bring this number down until it's kind of like the correct amount of twisting that I want. If it's too twisted, uh, you can see it starts looking a bit awkward like that. Only thing I still don't like about this is it still looks very jagged, and it's kind of like, how do we solve this? Because if we want to bring this even lower to get it even more twisted, this problem only gets worse and worse and worse. A uh, quick solution, we're going to take this length and bring it down even more, which kind of seems like not the solution, but believe me, we take the length, we bring it down more and more and more, which is going to add more points, which means the tilt is going to keep changing because the index goes from zero to a larger number. Do it like this. We're then going to take the index and then just divide it by number. So this is just a little hack. So I'm going to take it and divide it by something that gives us roughly the amount of twisting we want. Something like this. Kind of depends on how tangled you want your rope to be. And you can see it looks a bit smoother. Of course, you wouldn't want to zoom in all the way here. Uh, but from something like that, that looks pretty good. So um, again, what have we done so far? We took two circles and kind of this Venn diagram. We sweeped it along the curve and we twisted it or tilted it uh, based off the index. Um, in other words, how many points there are here, and that's going to be determined by the curve length. So as I increase this, um, it should keep working, as you can see. Okay, uh, at, at this point, it's probably a good time to save. So I'm just going to call it save.blend. Okay, uh, we have this. This is going to be the basis for our rope. Uh, let's just do a couple modifications just to make it look a bit better. Uh, first thing we can do, radius. I think we should bring it down just a bit, maybe by 25% just so it's a bit thinner and looks a bit more rope-like. So that's already good. Uh, second thing we can do is we can actually add in a second curved circle. So I'm going to have two of these, and you're thinking, oh, nothing changed. What's the point of this? Uh, the idea of separating these nodes is now I can take the radius of one of them and make it a bit thinner. This will just add a bit of variation where one of these strands is going to be thinner than the other, and then they twist together. Um, if you do this subtly from 1 to 0.8, uh, it's going to look roughly correct, but it's going to add a good amount of variation here. So here's what it looked like before and then after. Just kind of looks a bit better, in my opinion. And I think at this point, let's start making the material, and then we'll do the hairs and uh, all of that. So for the material, I guess we should just set up a basic scene, right? So let's do cycles on the GPU. And we just need to add in a bit of environment lighting. So I'm just going to add an HDRI that I downloaded from HDRI Haven. This one's fine. Uh, just so we can uh, make sure that our material look good, looks good. So film, transparent, all that. Uh, to make a material for geometry nodes, as you know, you take this whole node group, which again is basically a tilted curve that we turned into a mesh. We're going to take it. We're going to apply a material by setting the material. We can just use the default one. And then we can edit it. So in the shader editor... We go to the material, we could rename it rope, and you can see when we renamed it here, it also reassigned here, uh, meaning that anything we do here is going to actually affect it, as you just saw. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give this a bit of extra detail, okay? So first thing to do, of course, is to you know kind of pick a rope-like color. We'll hone in on this as we continue. So something like that, high roughness, since rope doesn't really uh, reflect light. Uh, we want to add extra kind of like knotted fibers to this as if it's composed of very, very numerous, several uh, tiny strands that make this up instead of actually putting them in geonotes. Uh, we want to kind of imply that. And I think the easiest way to do that is with a normal map. So here's how we're going to do it. Um, you might want to use something like a wave texture, but the issue with this is it's going to use generated coordinates, which doesn't necessarily flow along the rope. So you can see 
here we have these lines going like this, but as the curve tilts, they're kind of diagonal, right? We need a coordinate system. Um, and just like in the last tutorial, tutorial, if you saw that, uh, we can actually create a coordinate system from geometry nodes by sending some attribute information over, okay? So here's how we're gonna do it. So you, remember, everything we've done here, this kind of Venn diagram section, that is what's sweeping along the curve and this curve to mesh, uh, this is what we can invoke a coordinate system on. So I'm going to create an attribute for this. So let's capture an attribute. And then what are we going to call it? Uh, or what are we going to capture? Uh, we're going to capture something called curve parameter. Uh, if you're using a very, very recent version of 3.1 alpha or whatever, it's going to be called spline parameter, but it's called one of the two. Uh, what this does is it gives us the information of how far along uh, the curve or the spline we are, uh, which in other words, gives us a coordinate of this geometry nodes thing. Don't worry about it too much. Either way, we're gonna capture this attribute and we wanna send this to our shader. So I'm gonna output it um, out of the modifier. So now you can see we have an output uh, attribute. We can call this chord, cause it's gonna be our, I mean, it is kind of a chord, it's a rope, uh, but it's gonna be our coordinate and we import it in using attributes. Again, the attribute workflow is how you get information from here outside of geo nodes uh, to the shader editor. So just make sure we call the attribute the same thing. So chord, these match, uh, so that we can now see this information. And you can see we get this nice gradient that now flows with the rope. Because again, the rope is composed of the curve that we are referencing. So of course it's gonna flow. Either way, use this as the coordinate system for the wave texture. And you're gonna see now we get these nice fibers that actually flow along this no matter how this is rotated, right? Uh, so this is a free way to get some detail, right? So I just take this, I send it through a bump node to create in the height socket uh, to create some like fake normal information, right? What is real normal information? I don't know. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to our churro. You can see we're getting these like extra fibers that from far away kind of add a good amount of realism to this. Uh, we just want to bump up the, you know, how, how real this looks. Uh, we can do that by taking our distortion in the wave texture and just bringing that up. And you can see that kind of breaks up these fibers so they're not equally spaced. So here's before, they're equally spaced. And after, it just adds a bit of randomness and makes it look more fibery in all this. So that's already good. This is already looking a lot more stranded, not on an island, but stranded and rope-like. You can increase the number of fibers here. So this is pretty good. Um, I wanna add in a, a bit of extra color, a bit of extra detail. And I think a good way to do that, instead of using this wave texture, is let's use another piece of information. Uh, we can use ambient occlusion. In other words, what areas are kind of intersecting over each other. So you can see when we zoom in on this rope, we have these tiny shaded black areas where the thing's folding. And maybe we can use that as an area for a bit of dirt or darkening, right? Just to give this thing a bit more kind of character and shape. So I'm gonna take a color ramp just to make this a bit more defined. Uh, yes, we do get a bit of artifacting here, but it doesn't matter. We're never going to zoom in that close. Um, so I'm just going to kind of create this mask that shows, again, where this is folding. And I want to kind of take the color and base it off of that. So I'm going to mix RGB. I'm going to take our original rope color that we can edit. And I'm going to mix this with the color black, depending on this uh, ambient occlusion, which might be flipped. I believe it is flipped. So let's copy, or actually, first of all, let's set this to multiply, uh, but let's flip these. Was that incorrect? That felt like it was incorrect. Maybe we could flip the uh, color ramp. Because right now what's happening is the outmost part of the rope is being uh, darkened. There we go. So you can see uh, now this interior part of the rope is being darkened. Of course, I don't want it to be that much, so I'm just going to raise this. Eh, I guess uh, I feel like everything I'm doing in this part's wrong. We raise it here. There we go. And make it a tiny bit red and darken it again. And I think we can make this less intense by bringing down our color ramp. There we go. Now we're getting nice control. So it doesn't look like we added much, but here's the before and the after. So you can see it adds a ton of uh, kind of depth and dimension to this. Um, so let me just kind of reset my rope color just a tiny bit. I just want to kind of hone this in before we add a bit more detail. Okay, so this, this is pretty good. So what have we done so far? We've created a basic geometry node setup that creates the mesh. Uh, we sent attributes to make this nice material. Um, generally, it should be rough, not metallic. You can mess with the specular and all this, but um, I think this is a good start. I think the next thing to bump up this uh, realism to the next level is adding in more geometry. In fact, 
uh, we're going to add in these tiny hairs, like little loose fibers that came out, um, which sounds hard, but it's super easy, right? Because all we need to do is take this mesh and distribute hairs on it, right? So I'm going to distribute points on surface of everything before the material. So it's the curve mesh, but we haven't applied the material yet since I want a different material for the hair. I'm going to distribute some points. Here's what it looks like. You can't see anything unless it's in solid view. I'm going to bring up the density so you can see each of these points is going to spawn a hair is the idea. And we could spawn in basically a bunch of tiny cylinders. Each little cylinder is going to be kind of like a hair coming out of your head um, is a way to think about it. And as long as we make it low res, it shouldn't be too big. So uh, we want a points to instance, instance on points. There we go. Um, so for each of these points we distributed, we want to instance a, what kind of mesh? A cylinder. You could also do this with a tiny plane or whatever. Um, so we're going to do a cylinder. We take these, join them together, and yes, it's a disaster. <laughs> uh, we need to make the cylinder smaller. First of all, I'm going to decrease the vertex count so they're basically cubes um, so that it's not very high res. Um, next, I want to take the radius, bring it down so it's kind of like thinner hairs. In fact, let's make it 10 times thinner. And then I'm going to take the depth and obviously bring it down a bunch. So we have these tiny hairs that we're going to make even tinier coming out of this. So let me make them 10 times thinner. There we go. Maybe a depth of 0.5. And this is a good start. Um, main issue being they're all kind of, they look bad, but they're all kind of pointing upwards. And I want the hairs to kind of come out of the normal, um, off of the normal of the surface, depending which way it's facing. Um, we can do this using rotation, of course. So you can see we're changing the angle they come out at. Uh, but nice little trick, this distribute points on faces comes with this rotation output that you can just connect and that will automatically do it for us. So you can see they're all coming out of the uh, normal here. Um, in fact, what we can do now is kind of greatly increase the number of hairs we have. So I'm just increasing the number of points we're distributing. Um, and now let's work on the look of these. So I definitely want them to be thinner. So let me, eh, let me make them twice as thin. I'm going to divide the radius by two. I'm going to take the depth, also divide it by two. This is looking pretty good. You got to remember, we're going to take these fibers and make them the right color and all this and a bit transparent. So this is a good start. Um, I don't want all our, you know, hairs to be exactly the same size. So I'm thinking we can randomize the scale a bit. And in fact, we only want to randomize this on the Z channel, which is kind of the length that they're coming out at. So I'm going to combine X, Y, Z. And what we can do here is we can randomize, random value, uh, just the Z thing. So this is going to be a field that goes from 0 to 1. So you can see some of these are kind of long, and some of them just barely, barely poke out. In fact, we can change the radius also here by decreasing it. There we go. So now, now this is looking a bit better. Um, second order of detail or randomness we can add is they're all coming out relative to the normal, but that's kind of it. So they look very organized still. Uh, we want to randomize the uh, orientation as well. So we can do that by adding something to this rotation vector. So you can see when we add it, they all kind of shuffle. Uh, what do we want to add? Another random value. But this one's going to be a vector since it's rotating on the x, y, and z axis. So you can see when this is set to zero, they're all coming off the normal. But as we increase this, it's adding a tiny bit of randomness. Okay, so we have little hair fibers. Um, it's going to take a bit to get the look exactly down, like how many, what color, etc. Uh, but I'm going to do a lot of hairs for now. And then for the material, uh, we could play with that right now. So remember, we set material for the first one. I'm going to give this a material. So far, it's using the same one. But if I make a new hair material and apply that here, you can see now these are going to be, if I delete all this, these should be separate from each other. So you can see I can color the hairs differently and all that. So I'm going to give this kind of like a dark, dark fiber. And in fact, we could kind of randomize this. So here's a trick I saw in the comments of a YouTube video, a tutorial that I posted that I did not think of. I think we can use the random per island to get a different number between 0 and 1 for each of these as long as we realize the instances, which might not be worth it. But you can see now each hair has a different uh, black or white 0 to 1 kind of thing. We could use this to randomize the hair color. So I'm thinking let's just do it because I may as well just say that this exists regardless of whether or not it's going to be useful to us. Just so you know that this trick exists. Uh, whoops. So I'm just going to copy this color, paste it in our color ramp uh, here and here, and we can have a bit of a darker version. 
So you can see some of the hairs are brighter than others and all this. So we have the hair colors, and now I just want to take the alpha and bring it down. So they're 20% transparent, or 80% transparent, 20% opaque. So they're there, but they're a little hard to see, which means when we zoom out, um, it will give the vague impression of extra detail, and you can see. I mean, I guess you can't see since they're very tiny, but as you get closer, uh, they do help sell the realism a bit. So as for whether or not you want to realize instances, this is up to you. But again, uh, because all of this is based off of a length resampling, this should be so that whenever we extrude or whatever, uh, this is going to keep the same kind of rope distribution and it's going to scatter hairs even on the new sections, okay? So this is generally our rope. Uh, but now the coolest thing is if we take this, we can actually delete the original Bezier curve in edit mode. Um, all of this is kind of dependent on this group input. So if I was to take this tool, if you haven't seen this before, this is the curve draw tool. You take it, you can now draw in a curve, which is getting inputted here, sent through this math and through these shaders. And you can see we have a, a custom rope that we literally drew on. So if you have like a scene uh, with pre-established things in certain places, you could literally draw on top of it in places that would make sense, like over the barrel, whatever. And uh, it's going to work like that. Um, additionally, because it's all dependent on this input, you could also use a primitive. I believe a cyclic one will work, but let's find out. Yeah, so you can see here I uh, inputted in a star, and now the star... I mean, other than you can't really fix these kind of sharp corners. I mean, you could with a fillet, but other than that, it's working. So let's fillet this curve. That that just kind of makes it look like a cog, I guess. But you can see uh, the rope is doing exactly what it's supposed to. It has the hairs distributed on, etc. So uh, getting this to 100, so I feel like right now I got you to 80, 90% of what you need. Getting this to 100 is just adding in a bit of dirt, a bit of variation, a bit of whatever on the shaders, or maybe just adding in maybe a third strand that wraps in here that's like a bit thinner than the others, whatever. Um, in fact, I think that's what I did on my original. So let me just go to my rope blend. So again, same kind of thing. Let's see what this looks like. I believe for this one, I added in, yes, I added in three circles. So you can see there's kind of a very thin middle one here uh, that just kind of bumps up the realism even more, just because it looks a bit more uh, complicated and all this. Uh, but that that's the lesson. You know, th this is how you make rope uh, procedurally. So, yeah. Well, let's exit out of full screen here. How long? 23 minutes. Whoa! I thought this would be like a seven-minute tutorial. Whatever. Uh, either way, uh, we've made procedural rope. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this is the part of the tutorial you're not allowed to leave uh, where I talk about Patreon. So, first of all, thank you to 600, 700, 800 some um, active patrons that are funding this tutorial. Yeah. This tutorial channel and the CG Matter one, you guys are literally the main contributors that let me create these tutorials for free on YouTube. Uh, so thank you. Uh, but for people watching who aren't part of the Patreon and want to know what's up, here's what it is. So you get a bunch of benefits. It's not like you just give money and you're like, oh, I'm such a good person, which it could be that. But what it is, is you get a bunch of benefits. So you get early access to tutorials. So you could see uh, pretty much every single tutorial at least a day early. In some cases, much earlier than that. If I'm planning to go on a trip or something like that, that's usually in the spring and the summer and all this. Um, but you get early access to tutorials. See it before anybody else. You get the blend file. So this rope generator I made, um, download it. You don't need to make it. And I'll give you the nice one too, the one I made before the tutorial that I didn't make live. Um, any blend file I've ever uploaded, there are hundreds at this point. You can just download all of them once you join the Patreon. Um, blends, early access, exclusive tutorials at least once a month. Sometimes a tutorial series or multiple tutorials per month. These are tutorials that are unlisted. You cannot see them unless you're part of the Patreon. Um, all this exists over there. But in general, um, if you want to support this channel and the CG Matter channel, that this is literally uh, the most direct way to do that. I would appreciate it. You get your name in the credits and all that. So hopefully you learned something about Rope because uh, I didn't. I mean, I already knew the information and I told it to you. So maybe you know it now.